Bride, we are here today with banjo player Leroy Troy, uh, who was also known as the Sultan of Goodlitzville. In 1988, he made his debut in the Grand Old Opry, and in 1996, he won the National Old Time Banjo Championship. Uh, when he's not performing solo, he can be seen with the Tennessee Mafia Jug Band and weekly performances with Marty Stewart on RFD TV. So Leroy, tell us how you got started playing music. Well, Erica, when I was a kid, my folks had a Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs record. Mm -hmm. My favorite song was that Foggy Mountain Breakdown. Yeah. That's what made me want a five-string banjo. And I eventually got one, And uh, but I didn't know that Earl was th playing with three <laughs> fingers, you yeah. know. I didn't know nothing about style. And it just so happens, the first feller that I seen Seen up close playing a banjo, mm -hmm. he, he played played like that, uh -huh. you know, the old mountain style. And I picked up his lick, and um, and I played it for a long time. And then when I was a teenager, I met a feller by the name of Cordell Kemp. Mm -hmm. And Cordell lived up here at the Defeated Creek, Tennessee. Okay. And when Cordell was a youngster, he had learned a lot of his banjo playing from the king of the banjo pickers, Uncle Dave Macon. <laughs> and he was a big star on the Grand Ole Opry years ago. And uh, Cordell learned a lot from him. And uh, I learned a lot from Cordell, you know. And uh, I just took it from there. Cool. Been playing ever since. Adding a lick here or there. <laughs> Show us some of your banjos. Well, what is this one? This one uh, right right here is a uh, George Washburn banjo okay. made in 1890, and I've had this one for several years now. Mm. And uh, this is the one that I use to cut my monkey shines with. <laughs> <laughs> now this old uh, banjo here is a homemade instrument dated 1908, wow. and it belonged to a relative of. Uh, Feller used to own a barber shop here in Gulletsville. Mm -hmm. His name was Sid Berry, but this was made by a relative of his, a nice little uh, homemade banjo. And I think mm -hmm. that maybe the rim here was looks like it may have been a cheese box at one time. <laughs> <laughs> this banjo here is the one that I played. This is my main instrument, mm -hmm. and uh, it's an early '30s uh, TB1 banjo, and. Um, it's a nice sounded banjo, and I got it from my good buddy, banjo picking buddy, at Raymond Fairchild from Maggie Valley, North North Carolina. I've, I've had this about 15 years now. Wow. It's been a good one. All right, this, uh, this banjo here uh, belonged to Mr. Cordell Kemp that I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. He learned to play from Uncle Dave Macon. Yeah. And uh, lived up there in Defeated Creek, Tennessee. And uh, this was his old banjo. This is one he was playing the first time I ever met him. Mm -hmm. And uh, not sure what kind of banjo it is. I believe the pot on it is a bacon, but not sure about the rest of it. But uh, anyhow, it belonged to Cordell, and, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to, uh, to have it. <laughs> I'm going to show you how I play the claw hammer banjo. And it's right like this. <laughs> about as basic as it gets right there and I use that a lot all it is is you go down twice with your fingernails I, I use them two fingers right there middle and index and then I pluck that fifth string with my thumb the skin of my thumb Speed that up, it sounds like this. That'll get you started, I guarantee you. <laughs> 
Leroy, tell us about the Tennessee Mafia Jug Band. What is that, that all about? Well, the Tennessee Mafia Jug Band is really just friends of mine that I've grown up with. Lester Armistead sings a high tenor mm -hmm. in the band, and his son, who we call Little Mikey, he does lead singing. Mm -hmm. I do lead singing. Lester sings tenor to us. Um, I've known Lester since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Lester and his brother used to come to a lot of the pickings around home here. Yeah. And uh, anyhow, I went to school with this boy, Mike, and uh, also another friend friend of mine, Kent Blanton, also known as Superman. Mm -hmm. We went to school together, used to play, uh, play at school. And um, anyhow, we've been playing for years, and I used to have a band called the Tennessee Slickers, and Mikey and Superman was in my band. Hence, uh, I'm also known as the Tennessee Slicker, if okay. anybody asks it, how that come about. Okay. But we've been playing for years, and we're all not, uh, neighbors. And But there's been different, uh, different mu musicians mm -hmm. uh, to play with us. Some fine fiddlers, Dan Kelly. Shad Cobb, different ones. You never know who's going to be in the band. That's great. But me and Mikey and uh, Lester are the nucleus of the jug band. <laughs> Leroy, you are holding a contraption called the washing machine. Uh, tell us about it, what's on it, and how you came up with it. Well, I'll tell you what, when we first started the jug band, mm -hmm. I had an instrument that was mounted on, on a hoe handle, and um, it had bells and horns and yeah. stuff on it, and uh, the only thing about it, if we went somewhere to play, uh, I had to have a corner to put it in, because okay. it didn't have a, a kickstand. So anyhow, I got this uh, idea from Roy Acuff. Uh, you know, it, it was Roy Acuff and the Smoky Mountain Boys. Mm -hmm. They also had an alter ego called Pout and the Jug Band. Okay. And Robert Lund played the scrub board in the jug band, and it looked a lot like this. This is how it was set up mm -hmm. with the, uh, with the uh, bells and horns and whatnot. And so I come up but the idea from the Roy Acuff Jug Band. Mm -hmm. And you play it with thimbles. Yeah, I play it, play it with the th thimbles. We, in the Jug Band, we call it the agitator because it is <laughs> kind, kind of uh, loud. But, uh -huh. uh, and remember, this is a percussion right. instrument, so it sounds better if there's some music, but it sounds something like this. Is that enough? <laughs> Leroy, I understand that you have um, a CD out. Tell us about that and some of the other projects and tour dates and stuff that you're working on. Okay, well, we um, the Jug Band just has uh, put out a CD. They got two uh, CDs out. One uh, just come out a few months back, and mm -hmm. it's called Poor Leroy's Almanac. <laughs> and um, so that's that's new. And then I've I've got a uh, CD called The Old Gray Mare. Okay. And uh, it's been out for a few years, but I'm I'm gonna get busy on another, hmm. just me. 
and uh, I also have some other independent uh, records, uh, Leroy Troy, the uh, Tennessee Slicker, and um, anyhow, we're going overseas uh, this year, got some things booked mm. over in Ireland and up in the Faroe Islands, mm -hmm. that's somewhere in the North Sea. <laughs> And uh, oh, and also I have a website, and it is www.leroytroy.us. Okay. So check it out, and that gives a schedule in there too, and everything I got for sale. Jesse James was a man who killed many a lad. He robbed the Glendale train. He stole from the rich, and he gave to the He'd a hand, a heart, and a brain. For Jesse had a wife that mourned for his life. Three children, they were afraid. But that dirty little coward that shot Mr. Howard has laid poor Jesse in his grave. Leroy, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today and show us um, your house and this beautiful uh, place that you have here. Well, <laughs> uh, it's been a pleasure. Good. <laughs> Thank you.